All right, hi, moving on. We're going to create our first NFT collection. So in today's unit, we're going to create our first NFTs. Starting from the basic definition that an NFT is a single and indivisible resource on the network. In order not to be trivial, we're going to create a ticket vending machine for a movie theater. The idea is that by instantiating the NFT blueprint, we will pre-create a series of NFTs that will give access to a numbered seat in a movie theater and then we will sell them. So we're going to make some tickets, which are the NFTs, and we're going to sell them. All right, let's get cracking. First, let's set everything up. New package, so script up. So script to a new package, and we'll call it NFT tickets. Jump into it. And open it up. We need to do a little bit planning before we start. So what we're going to do, we're going to assume we have a small theater, four seats by four seats. And we're going to number them row one, column one, row one, column two, row one, column three, etc. And each seat will have an NFT or a non-fungible ID, which is unique to that seat. So that could be, for example, seat one. So we need to store the IDs and we need to store the seat numbers. All right, let's start coding. Let's start making some changes to this. So we'll call this Ticket NFTs. And the same Ticket NFTs. And we will say Instantiate Tickets. Let's make a bit of space here. All right, so we will need somewhere to store the tickets that we have. So we'll need a vault. So let's change this to available tickets. And then we will need, we're setting the price of the tickets. So we'll need a price, which will be a decimal. And we're taking some radix. So we will need a store for the radix. And then go into south. And this will become available tickets. Then we have to set the ticket price. So we have to do something first up here. We have to say price. So we can input the price and that will be a decimal. And then the ticket price will be the price that we set. And then we need to create an XRD store, which will be a new vault for the Radix tokens. Okay, what else? Resource builder. We want a new non-fungible token. And this will be for our ticket, so let's call it ticket bucket. It will be called ticket. We don't need this. The initial supply, we know it's going to be 16, but I'm going to change this as we go. And then here with the bucket, we're using the ticket bucket. So make everything match. And then change the comments. All right, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to randomly create 16 non-fungible IDs, and we're going to match them up with a seat address. And this whole thing that we create, we are going to call tickets. So let's do that now. The first thing we're going to do in instantiate tickets is create a new vector to hold the ticket data. Now vectors are covered in Rust and they are 8.1. And it says here, storing lists of values with vectors. Well, that's what we're doing. We're storing a list of non-fungible IDs and seat numbers. So the first collection type we'll look at is VECT, also known as a vector. Vectors allow you to store more than one value in a single data structure that puts all the values next to each other in memory. Vectors can only store values of the same type. They are useful when you have a list of items, such as lines of text in a file, or the prices of items in a shopping cart. And it says here, we have to do this. Let V vector I32 equal vector. So we're going to do this now, and we're going to store our data in a vector. So in here, let, it has to be mutable. We'll call it tickets, and it's going to be equal to a new vector. And now we have to populate the vector. So we're going to use a for statement. So we say for row in one to five, so it's going to do row one, row two, row three, row four, and then it's going to stop at row five. And then inside that, we're going to have for column one to five. Then into our tickets vector, we are going to push the data. So the first thing we need is the non-fungible ID. And the non-fungible IDs are going to be random. And then along with the non-fungible ID, we're going to have the ticket. 
and the ticket will basically have the row and the column and then close this off. What we have done here is set up a data structure for tickets where each ticket has a non-fungible ID and it has a row and column number associated with that ID. So now before we can use this we have to tell Scripto that we're doing that. So let's have a look at Rust. So in Rust, Rust Learn and in the standard library it has an attribute called derive. And then if we look in here and then the reference and the Rust reference says the derive attribute allows new items to be automatically generated for data structures. So we need to do that. And now if you look at this script to create in Rust and type in non-fungible data, which is what we're working with, we find this derive code that describes a non-fungible data structure. So we need to use this example amended for our needs. Let's do that now. So in here I'm going to tell it to derive a non-fungible data structure and that structure is this ticket with a row and a column. So in here we have ticket and in the ticket we've got a row and a column which are both unsigned 32-bit integers. And now is probably a good place to check what we have actually done. So let's check for any typos or errors. Red expected in. Oh yeah, for row in one to five. And then here we're getting another error. This function takes one argument, but two arguments were supplied. Ah, the two arguments are non-fungible ID and ticket. So if we put these in brackets, then we're only pushing one argument, which will then solve the problem. And here it is 16 tickets, but we have to put in here tickets. So it includes everything we have included in our variable tickets. And this method here is from the old Hello World program, so we're not using that. All right, we are good to go. So let's have a look at this and see what we have actually done. All right, so do the usual, create a new account, publish it, grab the package address, instantiate the function and grab the component address. And let's have a look at the component. So you can see here we have created 16 non-fungible IDs and 16 associated seat numbers. So this one is seat 31, 32, 41, etc. So we have our NFTs for the seat tickets in place. All right, so the next thing to do is to create the method to sell them. And I'm actually going to use the read temperature method from the advanced temperature and amend it. So let's call this buy a ticket or buy ticket. And it will be a mutable reference to self, the mutable payment, which is a bucket. And then a set temperature table contains. So we're going to change this here. And in here, we're going to make sure that there are tickets available. So we have to assert that the amount of available tickets is bigger than or equal to one. I'll show you a reference why I'm doing it this way in a second. And if it is, we continue. And if it isn't, we say, sorry, the city code you entered isn't valid. We say, sorry, sold out. And if it is, we have to check. So we assert that the amount of the payment is bigger than or equal to the ticket price. And if it is, we continue. And if it isn't, we say, sorry, insufficient fee. And then we have to take the ticket price from the amount of the payment and stick it in the XRD store. Almost there. We don't need any of this. And one other thing we have to do is we've sold a ticket, so we need to take one from the available ticket. So let ticket equals self dot available tickets and take one. We're not doing anything with the temperature. Nor with this. But what we have to do, because we have changed the available tickets, we have to return that. So it's usable by the main program. And we have to return anything that is left from the payment. So here we're returning a ticket and a payment, both buckets. But here we've only got one bucket. So we need to turn another bucket here. Now, if we look at this here, I've got decimal one. If I put the number one in here, I'm going to get an error. 
and the error says it's mismatched types. So it's expecting a struct scripto math decimal and it found an integer. So here I have to revert back to this. And the information is here. And if I type in decimal here and I go in here, it tells me decimal represents a 256 bit representation of a fixed scale number. And if we scroll down here, there is an inbuilt function, public function one, which refers to self, which returns a decimal of one. So I'm able to then check that there is at least one ticket available. All right, we should be good to go. So let's check that everything is working. We didn't change the struct, so we can publish this with a flag at the same package address. Before we buy a ticket, I need to grab the XRD address. So let's have a look in the account. Now let's buy a ticket. Call the method from the component, buy ticket, it's 30 XRD. And it says it was a success, so we should now have one ticket in our account. Let's have a look. Which I have here, I've got row three, column one. And if you look at the component, it has gone down to 15 and it's taken 30 radix. All right, let's create a new account for a new user and have the new user buy a ticket. And have the new account buy a ticket. And 30 radix has been taken from the new account. We now have one ticket, which is seat number row three, column three. So now we've sold two tickets. It's down to 14 tickets in the component. And the component has taken 60 radix. And the last thing from Academy of Scripto is a method so you can see what tickets are available. And for this, he uses a B tree set. I'm not going to get into this technically, but it simply said it's actually like a vector, but it doesn't allow duplicate values. Now let's see how to use this. So here we're going to create a method called available tickets. It's a mutable reference to self. And we will look at the available tickets in self and we will grab the non fungible IDs that are available. And then we will return that using a B tree set with non fungible ID data. OK, we are now good to go. And again, we're going to publish this using the flag and then we will have a look and see which IDs are available. And then call the method and there's no arguments. And it gives us a not very tidy list of all the tickets that are available. Hope that was useful. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.